You're in for a real treat today. We're here at the garden of Annette Schrader, my friend and co-host of this show. Annette, how fun is this to be in your garden on your show? It's my time. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah and I want to welcome you to what I call my friendship gardens. Friendship gardens because there's not a plant in here that I either met a new friend or an old friend gave me to. So I, I'm getting the cold chill bumps to tell you that these are part of my friendships. I love it, Annette. And that really is what our gardens it is. are, right? It, the person lives on in my garden. Absolutely. And we're here right actually beside your driveway yes. in this beautiful area where you've got rhododendron that are stunning. Well, and you know, they have survived here for over 25 years. And I originally had five, but things happen. But these two have survived. And some years I've had to water them, but I'm very proud of them because they came from a friend, the Murphy's Garden Center, and he's no longer with us. Well, you know, it's nice because we're in the middle of spring. And so you kind of get excited about early spring bloomers, and then you kind of start anticipating summer. Exactly. And mid to late spring things, we kind of overlook sometimes. Right. Yeah, we're so excited when we see that first daffodil yeah, exactly. or that snowdrop, or, you know, or that first crocus. But in this area, I have uh, various types of Japanese maple, and I'm really uh, starting this border, have a plant that's called a Harry Lauder walking stick, and it probably is a minimum of 25 years old. They're very slow growers, and I've had to relocate it several times, but it's happy where it is now. And I also have the Crimson Queen Japanese maples. I have probably three in, in this one area. They're just quite stunning because they they're are. just so different. This is the butterfly Japanese maple. Uh, some of these are, you know, what happens over time right. uh, that we forget what the names are, but I've actually successfully grown several in containers that are in this border. I tried to have some flowering things in the border here, and I even have a penny that was originally in too much shade, but I unfortunately had to lose some trees in the, in the late winter. Annette, you say that you don't plan your garden, but boy, we've got some pretty purple going on here. Well, no, you know, I, I actually have never drawn out on paper. I've never had a list of what I'm going to put anywhere. This is my friendship iris from my dear friend Jerry Anderson. This is called Jesse's Song. This is beautiful. Isn't it beautiful? And so every time I look at it, it brings her back to me. She passed away at 100 years of age. Oh. And so I didn't make any plans for this garden over here either. I have a plant in there that I'm not really liking. It's that variegated Japanese Solomon seal. I see it. It's trying to take over. But it's a good thing because it keeps the groundhog and the deer out of there. <laughs> so it, it has a purpose. Exactly. I try to work with what I know some of these critters don't like. Yeah, but they don't say never. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, but, and Annette, before we leave this area, talk to me about this because this is stunning. Well, that it looks like a weird. It is kind of weird. And you know, someone said, well, I was going to plant one of those, but it's leaning. That's actually. Typical. This is a black dragon, Japanese false cedar. It's kind of eclectic. Yeah. I suppose is what I would say about it. But but typically that that has been here 15 to 20 years. Wow. And it's obviously and, very happy as well. And on that note, I've been here 42. <laughs> so, and we're standing. you're only 43. So I like. know. Yeah. <laughs> but now we're standing right here in in the shade. Of, this is a special tree because. There was a, a garden center in Dixon, Tennessee that gave me this in memory of my husband who passed oh. away, but it came with no name. So it's Lowry's tree. Oh, I love it. It's and Lowry's it's got little blooms on yeah, it that are pink. There's and... some people that won't plant Japanese maples because they come up a lot of places. Okay, now like you know, over into the shaded area, I have some special plants too. For instance, this one is a Baptisia. This is the native Baptisia. And it comes with a, its own special story. It probably was from my mother-in-law, and she and her neighbor would discuss this plant and decide who had it first on their <laughs> fence line. And one day, she was a very fine Christian woman, but one day she turned around and found on in her little hand, she clutched a seed pot. I had one seed. <laughs> 
And <laughs> here's the plant. That's the native Baptisia. That's fantastic. I'm trying to create color with my pots that I have put coleus in over here. See, I have no flowering plants in that because I want it to echo. If you start with all of my Japanese maple coming around the drive, then you come to this coleus and it's, it continually brings that color even onto the path that we're yeah, about to go on. It does guide your eye through it does. the garden, it does. for sure. You've got peonies that are- I do have that peonies. Are exploding. And this one is an elegant one. And you know, I've got to preserve my names better because these all were put into the ground with names and now they're gone. <laughs> even though this plant has only been in my garden for two years and this white one over here also. Uh, but then of course, the pink ones back here, that's your traditional Sarah Bernhardt. Right. And the, the herbaceous one. But this Japanese maple right here is going to grow taller to kind of echo off some of these taller plants back here. And it will also create me some shade here. So Annette, what other little surprises do you have hidden in this area of your garden? Well, I have what I consider to be a rare evergreen dogwood. And I bought it from that wonderful plantsman, Don Shadow. And I've had it probably close to 20 years, and it blooms like the kusa, Chinese kusa dogwood. Right. I'm very proud of it. And it blooms when? In the early... Very soon. Very soon. See, that my... It's got <laughs> blood buds on it. Yes, and my kusas are already blooming in the back garden. And it'll make a little red fruit, too, when it's finished blooming. You know, it's kind of nice to have things that stagger yeah. in blooms. So you, as you finish enjoying something, you've got something else to anticipate. Yeah, and you know, what I've really created, other than a monster, is I've created a garden that I want to focus. I have some older, well-matured, established trees and shrubs. And intermingled into them, I find a place to put my other friends. Yeah. But always room for more friends. Exactly. This is my mother's penny. I helped her plant it. Aww. I never went to her house and she didn't, when it was in bloom, Annette, come on, let's go look at the penny. Aww. And some sister or, or an aunt gave it to her. And then when the home was just a house, I went down and dug it and brought it here and it survived and it's being divided among some of my nieces and nephews. Yes, and I have her nestled up underneath my favorite Japanese maple. This is the coral bark. And the leaves aren't coral, but in, when it's, all the leaves are off and in late winter and it starts to color up and the bark and the, especially the little limbs coming out turn a coral color. And it's got a beautiful fall color also. How much fun is that? I don't know, but I lugged it home from a convention somewhere in a five gallon bucket. <laughs> Look at it now. <laughs> it's, and, and it's my, a wonderful location for the hostas. Your, your hostas seem to be the happiest I've ever seen. They love it, obviously. I mean, you know, I really haven't done much for them. Annette, tell me about this hosta here because I'm in love with it. I hope I don't end up with this in my purse. Well, I'll give you some legally if you want it. <laughs> This is a hosta called Sea Dream, and I've had it for a number of years, and I have got it sited in several different kind of locations. I even have one over in the front beds that's in lots and lots of sun. This will get a little bit of sun in here. What's making your eye love this is the chartreuse color. Yes. Because that color is a, a, a something that will blend a lot, it's a unifying color. Especially With against all, plants. all these others that are yeah. that are surrounding it. You could put it in the middle of red and purple that somebody didn't like together, but you could put the chartreuse in there and it brings them to unity. But I have a little collection of miniature hostas over here. Now those are sweet. With my bird bath. And and, and, and do you have a favorite of these? Oh, I think. Because they're all so cute. Well, it's this, like little Barbie hostas. The curly fries back here. Those are some of my favorites. And then the, the blue mouse ears. They're just sweet. They are, and they, they're very hard, hardy is I guess the word. This could be the most spectacular magnolia ever. And I'm from Mississippi, that's saying a lot. Okay, well you know that they say the right plant in the right place. And when I planted this, this is a Macophilia big leaf magnolia. Some people call it the cucumber magnolia. Um, that's been there over 20 years, but I didn't quite come out far enough from the tree canopy, all of the oaks that are in there behind it. It does draw attention, and I'm glad I have it. It's stunning. 
Annette, how can something so beautiful be so stressful? You know, they say in everyone's life a little rain must fall. Well, in every gardener's life, you might lose a tree. A tree falls. <laughs> Before this happened, I had two beautiful trees, a black gum and a, a hickory nut tree. They died, and in January, a tree service came and cut them down. Mm. And I, I knew, and I kept trying to tell them, don't step in this spot, don't step in this spot, because you can't see them, but there's something very precious under here. Right. So I knew immediately that what had been a shade garden was going to be full sun. And when you were, if you were here at noon, you would see what I mean. So I looked at the direction of my sun coming up to the east behind us, the setting sun over here to the west, and I decided a pergola mm -hmm. could be my, this is a wait and see game. This might work and it might not work. But the stumps, uh, one stump is underneath the pergola there with that big pot of hosta sitting on it. That was the black gum tree. And so I positioned the top of it running north and south so it would produce me shade and running east to west in the afternoon. Some of my foundational plantings, my mahonias, which are not everyone's favorite, are my friend right now. I have some upright yews that are actually a full shade or a sun, full sun plant. And my acubas, mm -hmm. my acubas are gonna survive it. I have the hydrangea uh, over on the other side. And again, I have a cuba over there. So what I'm having to do now is see what this summer is gonna do for me. I've already, you can tell, this is not an old established in the front. I have purchased plants for the sun now. Right. And I have transplanted a lot of the hostas that were over into the front of this into pots. And I'm putting them in other places because a, a hosta likes a pot. And, and they like shade. And unfortunately, when you lose trees like that, you yeah. just change their whole environment. Yeah. I had a vision this time. Right. I did plan this. You had to. I had to. And and so I'm getting chill bumps. <laughs> I had to know where I was going with this. Yeah. It wasn't grab a plant and plant it. Right. So in the back, I have a wonderful hosta that's monstrous. He's called Grey Ghost. I have a victory. He's huge. And so I'm going to watch this bed all summer. And when winter comes, I hope I can rest knowing that maybe I made the right decisions. And Annette, that's what I love about your garden, and thank you for this beautiful tour today, is that it is about friendship and sharing. And you, not, you have not only shared your plants with others, but you've shared your plants now with our viewers, and they're going to love it. So thank you for being our hostess today. It's my greatest desire to share what I know with those I may never see again. And that's been the, the blessing of the volunteer gardener for me. All of those garden paths that I've walked, and there's friends in every one of them. Absolutely. And thank you that and I you have my ties. <laughs> we're friends. Thank you. For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.